Hey, welcome to Grace Chapel. Uh, welcome back to the Acts video series. Today, we are going to be reading out of Acts chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. This is the story of Ananias and Sapphira. If you've got your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn there. We're going to read the story, and then we're going to talk about the story, and then you'll have uh, an opportunity for personal reflection or discussion in your life group. So Acts chapter 5, starting at verse 1. It says this, But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, and with his wife's knowledge he kept back for himself some of the proceeds and brought only a part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back for yourself part of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not at your disposal? Why is it that you have contrived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came upon all who heard it. The young men rose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter said to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, How is it that you have agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. Immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. When the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon all who heard of these things. This is a very uh, different kind of story it's than crazy. what we've been going through in the book of Acts. And, um, you know, one of the interesting things about this and what was happening in the early church is people were... The, the background of this is people were selling their property and bringing all of their wealth to the church and offering it to the church for distribution for anyone who had need. And we talked about this the, the previous Sunday in Acts chapter 4. And they were meeting needs all over the place. And then here's this story just inserted in there that just seems, well, it just seems kind of harsh. Yeah. You know? You could definitely misread it. because yes. You could read it and go, well, wait a minute. like. Because it could sound almost like a communist type thing. Like totally. Everybody's going to give all of their money and then it's going to be redistributed, you know. But the reality is that the problem isn't with the money and it isn't even with the land. They didn't have to give any of it. Right. Um, it was the lying yes. that was the issue. So it was like, I'm going to exaggerate this gift that I'm giving. Basically, I and you see, like, basically, if we're talking about the acts of the apostles, we're also talking about the act of the Holy Spirit, right? Yep, yep. So it's not like Peter kills them. It's like the Holy Spirit yeah. is not okay with this manipulative lying yes. going on. And, yes. and that's that's the issue. Yes. The, the interesting thing is, you know, if they had been honest about what they had sold it for and honest about what they were bringing, there would be no issue. But it's the fact that they wanted to appear to be just as, if not more generous than other people that were bringing their resources and goods to the early church. And because they wanted to appear that way and they lied, and, and this is an interesting principle for us, is that Peter says, you, you have not lied to man, mm -hmm. but to God. Yeah. And it tells us a number of things. Number one, there isn't anything in our lives that is a secret from God. Everything is laid bare before Him. He knows the depths of our own motivations. He knows the depths of our hearts. He knows it better than we do. And, uh, and so even in addressing that, that, there's a principle there that God sees it all and that when we lie about anything, we're not just lying to men, but we're lying to God. And that's, God takes that very seriously. And, you know, this is one of the first things, right, that really sets the tone for the church with the fear of the Lord, which is there will, it will not be tolerated 
um, in the church uh, for people to be fake. Yeah. And the issue is being fake. The issue is not giving or not giving. You know, the issue is I'm going to act like I'm something that I'm not. Yes. And so the the issue isn't even if if you're flawed. They you know because they could say you know what we sold this property and we just really want to buy a nice house on the Mediterranean, <laughs> and we're going to do that. Yes. You know because that's our you know that's our retirement home and we really want to spend all that money there. Um, not a problem. It's their money. Yeah. But when they fake, like it was basically like, like, look how giving we are and look how good we are. And you just, because people say this about the church, it's like, like the, you know, I'm not perfect. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm saved. You know, it's this idea of like, it's this, we're, we're not trying to put on some sort of idea that the church is full of all these perfect people. Yeah. It's like, let's just be honest. Let's be honest. We're all a mess. And yeah. here we are yeah. trying to follow the Lord together. And if we, it, But let's not lie. Yeah. Let's not pretend that we are better than we are. Let's not act like we're something that we're not. Let's all basically put our total trust and dependence on the salvation of the Lord, not on our own yep. self-effort or gifts that we bring. Yeah. The thing that I think that is is, it's beautiful in, in well the, in a sort of morbid way in this story. But what's beautiful is you see God's heart of protection for this this early church. So this is the very beginning, the very birth of the church, and He's setting a precedent that that kind of behavior, that kind of deceit, that kind of hypocrisy, is not going to be a part of his body. And he's he's addressing that. I, I mentioned this uh, back when we did our series on the Ten Commandments, that, you know, one of the challenges with being a pastor or a preacher is, you know, how do you get people to tell tell the truth? And we made the joke that like, well, that would do it. Yeah. That would do it. And great fear came upon the entire church yeah. because of what was happening. And they saw how much God cares about honesty and what is true and um, and integrity and and those sorts of things and so he's he's setting the tone for the the trajectory of uh, his bride and his body yeah and so you know as in our in life groups when you're discussing this you know I just want you all to know that it's great if you want to watch this on your way to life group or maybe even you guys watch it together as a group but but we want you to have the conversation so get get the word out read it for yourself, look at what it's saying, and always stop and ask the question, what is God saying to me? Mm -hmm. Um, What is God actually speaking to my heart? What is the Holy Spirit leading me to do in reaction or in response to this passage? And so as we go along, yes, these are just conversation starters to get us all heading in that direction. But what we really want is for you to get into the Word and to discuss it with other believers. And that's kind of our heart in doing this series. So enjoy your conversation or personal reflection, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.